Let's take a look at math, grade 4, module 6, lesson 9, decimal fractions. Topic C, decimal comparison. Okay, so for the first one, what I have is I have one of our meter sticks and I put a piece of tape um, right at the end here and I put it to where from here to here we have 0 and 67 hundredths of the meter stick. Now I know you can't really see that so I'm going to zoom in um, so you can see that at one point we have 60 and then we have 61 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, and here's the line for 67, and that's right where we have our piece of tape. So what I have here is an area model, and it's the same size as my meter stick. So right here would be 67 hundredths of the meter. And I want to shade that in. So when I shade in this first portion, I'm shading in one-tenth of the meter. But this meter has 100 parts to it. So from here to here, this is one-tenth, or it's ten hundredths. So this would be twenty hundredths, thirty hundredths, forty hundredths, 50 hundredths, 60 hundredths. Now with this one, if I go all the way to here, I'm passing up my mark. So I, what I'll need to do is I'll need to show the 10 individual parts that make up this one-tenth piece right here. So first I'm going to break it up into 10 parts, and then I'm going to shade some of them in. I need to shade in seven of them because right here I'm at 60. So this would be 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67. So 67 would take me to there. So I need to shade those in. So now I have shaded in 67 hundredths of this area model that is the same length as my meter stick. Alright, let's do another one. With this one, I've taken the same size meter stick, but I put a piece of tape on it at the 59 hundredths of a meter. So from here to here, I'm at 59 hundredths of a meter. And let's zoom in on that so we can see what that looks like. So here we have 50 and then we have 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, and then 59. And right at 59 is where we put the red tape. So if I take out another area model that's the same size as a meter sh stick, and I want to show 59 hundredths of that, well, this is one tenth, and it's also ten hundredths. So you see I have fifty nine hundredths, so this is ten of those hundredths, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, and then I need to break this up into the ten parts, and I need to shade in nine of them. So this would be representing fifty nine hundredths. So let's say I wanted to compare these two numbers. 67 hundredths and 59 hundredths. Well, I can look at the meter stick and I can see that 67 hundredths went further down the meter stick than 59 hundredths did. Also, I can look at the area model and see that more of this meter is shaded in than this one. So, 67 hundredths would be greater than 59 hundredths. Let's compare some decimal numbers that represent mass. So when I put one of my bags of rice on the scale, I can click here and it'll reveal what part of a kilogram the mass is of this bag of rice. So bag A is a tenth of a kilogram. So I'm going to use this chart to help me record 
the mass of each bag of rice. So here's A, and when I look here, how many whole kilograms do we have? Well, we can look at this number and we can see that we have zero whole kilograms. And I'm going to put in my decimal. I have one-tenth, and I don't have any hundredths listed there. But I could say that I have ten hundredths. One-tenth has ten hundredths in it. All right, let's take a look at bag B. That one is zero and sixty-five hundredths. So when I write that on my chart, I have zero whole kilograms. I have to put in my decimal point. Six tenths and five hundredths. I could say I have sixty-five hundredths, or I could say I have six tenths, five hundredths. Let's take a look at bag C. This one is seven tenths. I have zero whole kilograms. Put in my decimal. I have seven tenths, and then I have zero hundredths. I could say I have seven tenths kilograms of rice in bag C, or I could say I have seventy hundredths of a kilogram of rice in bag C. And then in bag D, I have forty-six hundredths. That means I have zero whole kilograms. Put in my decimal. I have four tenths. And inside each of these tenths, I have ten parts. So that's forty. And then I also have six more hundredths. So I have forty-six hundredths. Now we can use this chart to help us compare each of the bags of rice to see which one has the most mass. The first thing I'm going to look at is my ones. Do any of the bags have whole kilograms? No, they all have the same amount. So then I need to look to my tenths place. When I look at my tenths place, I can see that bag C has seven tenths. Seven tenths is larger than six tenths and four tenths and one tenth. So bag C has the most mass. Let's compare some decimal numbers that represent volume. What I have here is a drawing of a beaker. And this beaker could contain one whole liter of fluid. I have this little scale running up the side that shows me that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten parts that this liter is broken up into. Let's just say this is water. In this container, I have five tenths of a liter, because my one whole liter is broken into ten parts, and I have five of those parts filled up. Between each one of these tenths, I have ten parts. So in this case, I put in some more liquid, and now I'm five more parts above this line, but they're smaller parts. Because between this line and this line, I have ten parts. So this is like a close-up of what's happening between here and here. So you can see that in between each one of these, we have ten parts. How much liquid is represented in this beaker now. Well, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. So 55 hundredths of a liter. At first I was showing 5 tenths of a liter. Then I added a little bit more, and now I'm showing 55 hundredths of a liter. So let's take a look at some different beakers. Um, they all have different amounts of liquid in them, and we're going to measure each one, and we're going to record it 
on this little chart. So let's first take a look at beaker A. So with beaker A, we have our whole leader would be all the way up to the top. So represented here, we have one, two, three tenths. So on my chart, I'm going to have a zero in my ones column. I have to put in my decimal. And I'm going to put in a three to represent my three tenths. Let's think about three tenths and thirty hundredths. I have three tenths, so that's one, two, three. But in between here and here, I have ten hundredths. So I could count this one, two, three tenths, or I could count it ten, twenty, thirty hundredths. Let's take a look at cylinder B. I'm going to start by putting in my zero ones because I do not have one whole liter. But I do have one tenth of a liter. So I'm going to put that one in. But first I got to put in my decimal. And then I can put in my one tenth. And here it is from the bottom to this part is one tenth. So then I just need to count how many hundredths more. One, two, three, four, Five. So that's five hundredths more. This is thirty hundredths here. This is fifteen hundredths here. And you can see that this is B and this is A. And A is more than B. So let's take a look at C now. So here's C and it looks like it gets almost all the way to this mark, which would be one, two, three. It gets almost all the way to three tenths. So I'm going to begin by saying I don't have a whole liter, so that's zero whole liters. I'm going to put in my decimal point. But what do I write for the tenths? How many whole tenths do I have? Well, I can count those. One, Two. I have two whole tenths. And then there's only one part that I don't have between here and here. So that means that I'm one away from ten. That's nine. This is nine hundredths because there are ten parts between here and I have all of them except for the last one. Let's take a look at cylinder D. For cylinder D, we have to put a zero for the ones again because it's not completely full. I have my decimal. But for my tenths, the liquid doesn't go all the way up to the first tenth. So I have zero tenths. And then for my hundredths, you can see that I'm one away from having ten. So that means nine. And I could count them if I wanted to. There are nine hundredths there. So now we can compare these numbers. We can see which cylinder had the most. Three tenths, even though I don't have a zero here in my hundredths place. I could put one if I want to, to help me compare them. And I can see that three tenths is the same as thirty hundredths. Thirty hundredths is greater than twenty-nine hundredths, and it's greater than fifteen hundredths, and it's greater than nine hundredths. That'll take care of things for Lesson 9, where we've been using place value charts and metric measurements to compare decimals and answer comparison questions.